Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Daly. I spent 20 years with United Press International, most of it with the old UPI radio network. And my favorite assignment was going on the road producing and hosting American Montage. It was an hour-long weekly program. Now here's an edited version of one of those shows. I thought we would have some fun this week by going to the Binney and Smith Company in Easton, Pennsylvania on this week's program. I don't know whether Binney and Smith rings a bell, but if I say Crayola crayon, certainly a lot of wonderful memories should come to mind. All of us have had boxes and boxes and boxes, probably one of the best known American products around the world. We're visiting the plant, the home office of Binney and Smith, and as you go in, there is a museum of sorts to the history of the Crayola crayon. Our host and our guide is the PR director here, Sandy Horner, and as we walked in, she mentioned that there was um, a little tribute being paid to some of the Crayola colors that have been discontinued over the years. These crayons were retired in 1990. They represent eight colors that were perhaps not as interesting to young children. When we surveyed kids, they were looking for bold and bright colors. Um, these were some that didn't make the cut, and they were retired in 1990. I hate to tell you this, but my second favorite color as a child, which is maize, which I used to use for nearly everything, is one of those that you retired. But I'm sure you've heard a lot of people saying, why? Why my color? Well, actually, in 1990, when we announced the discontinuation of these eight crayons, there are many uh, groups that formed to protest this. One, which you could have been a member, uh, was the Raw Umber and Maize Preservation Society, or rumps. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you did phase some of these out, it was it was still good publicity that so many people objected. Many people objected, and in fact, we, we did bring the eight crayons back for a limited time in a collector's edition, which was snatched up. Now, what did you do then to replace them? Did you just leave eight holes in the box? Or? No, we added eight new bolder and brighter colors. And what, what has been the reaction so far? Um, very popular. Uh, the new colors included cerulean, royal purple, fuchsia, jungle green, vivid tangerine, wild strawberry, dandelion, and teal blue. And uh, kids, our primary consumers, just love them. You know, I was thinking on the way in that there's probably no product, and I hate to call these toys, but in, it's funny to classify them as that, but if you, if you lump into there everything that you play with that brings you enjoyment, uh, Crayolas certainly are toys. I don't think there's any other toy that you can safely say that this is something that every child has had at one time. It's really the first um, item a child picks up to express themselves when they're young. Um, when you think about it, a crayon is the first thing that parents feel comfortable giving their child. What has been the reaction when you see children come through here and see these big mock-ups of Crayolas? And by the way, the word crayon, do you mind me using that? Is it a trademark? Is, that, is, it, is it a euphemism for Crayola? How, how, did all, how did the word itself come about? Well, the word Crayola was coined by Alice Binney, the wife of our founder, Edwin Binney. Um, and it comes from cray, which is French for chalk or stick of chalk, and ola for oleaginous, which is wax. And that's one of the primary ingredients in Crayola crayons. Um, it is Crayola crayons. Crayola is the brand name and, and crayon is the product. Sometimes people say Crayolas, which uh, upsets our trademark lawyers, of course, <laughs> because Crayola uh, is singular and it describes the crayon. But, you know, it's amazing how we now use Xerox to mean any copier and Kleenex to mean, and it sure, it must make those companies happy. And if you're old enough, in my parents' generation, the word Frigidaire, which is a brand name, meant, refri meant refrigerator. That's right. Well, Crayola is a certain type of crayon, the best type of crayon, if you will, so we want to make sure people know the difference. It's kind of fun to see bins and bins of crayons that are all the same color. We're used to seeing boxes of them looking like the colors of the rainbow. We turned around, and here was a huge machine making nothing but orange crayons. Orange crayons. I think they are our preschool crayons, which are bigger size for smaller yeah. hands. Now, we also make crayons through a rotary molding process, which is slightly more automated. We'll take a look here. I think we're making purple crayons, maybe violet crayons. Uh -huh. Here, the wax is actually mixed, as we said before, but it's automatically fed into the machine rather than manually poured. Uh -huh. And each step of the game, you see little molds shoot uh, the crayon wax into holes. You see the holes coming around here. Yeah, kind okay. Of format. And um, it'll actually shoot down. And then as the mold, it's a big circular mold right. now, instead of kind of the yeah. rectangular shape. As it moves around, it's heated and dried with these little heating elements. And then as we go around, there's a manual 
whole scraping process. Okay, by the time we've made one half a revolution of this about six foot in diameter machine, you can see by the time it gets over here, it's dry. That's right. We have heaters that dry it. The top wax is scraped off and recycled, as we just saw. And then this, this arm, I call it the arm machine. It's got two arms, and it goes back and forth and picks up the extra crayons. If you get down low, you can see the crayons shoot up into the mold. There they go. Yep, okay. purple crayons coming up. It will turn and automatically deposit the crayons in the labeling machine. Well, you know, Sandy, I hate to say this, but seeing this kind of takes some of the magic out of it. <laughs> well, we hope you'll still feel the same way about Crayola crayons. But oh, I, I, I do, but I thought that there were, like, ladies in a garage somewhere who made them one at a time. There were at one point in time, but obviously we have to make a lot more now than we used to. So, we have so to once the crayons have come out, they're picked up and turned, and then there's a lady over here who's doing the same kind of quality control inspection. Yes, that's actually the second stage where they can check them when they're being labeled to make sure they're right. If you want, we can walk around and yeah, see sure. labeling. Hi. Boy, you've got just every conceivable kind of... Uh... Which way? Over here? Okay. Oh, look at this. Oh, now, what is this machine doing? Well, here the crayons are dumped into this collector, and they actually, I call this a ladder. They actually get hooked into a ladder and come right up, uh -huh. and they're collected here. Oh, we're adding glue. Now, this is a homemade glue formula. We make that here, and... That looks good enough to eat. <laughs> no, I don't think so, but... It's lumpy, our labeler said. Now, as the crayons come down and hit the labeling wheel, you'll see the label is applied. The glue actually goes on the drum, and then the label comes over. And Crayola crayons are double wrapped, so they're, they're uh, very strong when you color with them. Once they come through the labeling machine, they're actually scooped up and put into those um, wooden crates that you like so much. Oh, boy. You know what, I? if there's anything I'm going to sneak away with, I think, if you'll let me, it's a label that hasn't been put on a Crayola. Oh, I think, we should get one of those. Can, can we do that? I think that would be a nice souvenir, because there's no way, you see, you could ever peel one of those off. <laughs> There's no way you could ever peel one of those off and have it still look that nice. We're making fuchsia today, so here's a few fuchsia labels for okay, you. Okay, I'll... It bigger than they do on the crayons. Yeah, because they, well, there's a, they have to be overlapped, I guess. Well, you say they're double wrapped. That's the, uh, boy, fuchsia is a bright color. Double wrapped for strength. Now, after the crayons are labeled, they're put into these big wooden crates, and they're stacked according to color throughout the plant. So, up until this point, the crayons have remained with their, their own kind, their own yeah. color. But then what happens uh -huh. is we bring them down to a sorter. Uh, I might point point out to people, this looks a lot like the uh, equipment you see on TV occasionally in cigarette factories. You're looking at the ends of all of these stacked up yes. uh, Crayolas. Whereas before we saw the tips, we're now yeah. looking at the ends. Now these big, um, the crates are put on these big color wheels. If you'll see, they have, this one has 16 different colors all around. And the wheel actually rotates. And the crayons by color are taken and put into this sorter. The bottom of the machine pushes one of each crayon to the crayon sleeve, the little brown box you'd see in a 64 or a 96 box. In those boxes, we work on sets of 16. So if you look down the line, right now we're packing 64 boxes. You see four of these sorters. Each has 16 colors in it. Sandy, what's next? Do you, I guess you probably can't talk about it. Do you have any... Uh I don't know where you could go from here. You've got metallic and iridescent and glow-in-the-dark and a hundred colors and uh, in invisible Crayolas, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Ones that write and you can't... Disappearing ink Crayolas. Well, we've always got something in our pockets. And uh, certainly, you know, next year we'll see much more excitement from Crayola Crayons. So I hope we'll be able to come back and visit and share that with you. Sandy Horner, thanks a lot. Thank you, Dennis. And there you have it, another edited episode of one of the American Montage programs prepared for the UPI Radio Network back in the 1980s and 90s. I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for going with me this week. And check YouTube for more American Montage programs.